Racism is real. And it can not only cause psychological pain, but also physiological damage to those who experience it. So today we're going to look at the science of racism, using studies and evidence to see exactly how it impacts individuals, uncover what makes people racist in the first place, and understand what we can do to successfully combat it right now. Every time a resume comes across somebody's desk, the name on it makes a difference. After sending out over 1,300 fake resumes in response to employment ads, scientists found that resumes with more traditionally sounding black names receive 50% fewer callbacks than those with more white sounding names. Again, these resumes were literally identical, except for the names. This shows how one aspect of racism can have a significant impact on opportunities. Now, classism is a huge issue. Studies show that if you grow up in poverty, you'll experience more discrimination than people that are wealthier than you. But even when black and white people grow up in wealthy families and have similar education, even though they start wealthy, black boys are more likely to end up poor. One of the major factors can start as early as preschool, where teachers are more likely to punish black students over white students for the same behavior. Even in adulthood, prison sentences for the same crime are temporary percent longer for black men, and the use of force is 3.6 times higher. When studying the existence of racism towards indigenous people in Australia, 45% of indigenous families reported racism. And interestingly, scientists began to link these experiences to poor mental health status, sleep difficulties, obesity, and even asthma. Which brings up an important fact. Racism can truly be damaging to your health. Now, racism involves a set of people holding power over other people. And that imbalance in power is what causes stress. And again, this can be measured experimentally. When Latina students were paired with people they'd been told had racial bias against them, their cardiovascular stress response went up compared to those who were partnered with people they told had no bias against them at all. Another study of Korean immigrants found that discrimination was linked to debilitating mental health effects. And the scientific community is now validating how racism plays a significant role in the formation of health disparities. So much that there are now links to breast cancer, hypertension, and heart disease. The chronic stress of racism can have people leaning on negative health behaviors like smoking and drinking. In fact, the amount of racism that a person experiences in a year is positively correlated to the number of drinks and cigarettes consumed. Of course you'd expect that if you go to your doctor, your health would be in good hands. But racial biases exist here as well. Hundreds of medical physicians were asked to look over a case of either black or white patients who likely just suffered a heart attack. Those who scored higher on a racial bias test were less likely to prescribe black patients a drug that would reduce blood clots and prevent heart attacks. In fact, half of white medical students and residents still believe in false biological differences between white and black patients. Like that black patients are more pain tolerant than white patients because of less sensitive nerve endings and thicker skin. These false beliefs negatively contribute to medical treatment. And doctors with these biases don't outright refuse care to black patients, and they probably don't consider them themselves racist. Yet these biases persist in society and in institutions, which means that many people still hold these beliefs and values. For example, studies show that most people perceive the faces of other races to be more angry than faces of their own race. Now these findings make some people uncomfortable because it's hard to look at your own bias and where you sit and perpetuating some of these values and beliefs that don't do the good that we think we're doing. Now the good news is there's a lot that we can do to combat racism and unlearn our own biases right now. The thing is, we're not born racist. We learn biases from our environment and how we are raised. When children are adopted before the age of eight by someone of a different race, they actually develop the same facial recognition patterns of their adoptive parents rather than their own race. It shows that our ability to quickly judge other races is learned from our parents or our environment. This is why talking about racism and anti-racism is so important. And if you do hold racial bias, the important thing to know is that you can change your brain. A study of brain scans showed that a specific brainwave pattern occurred in those with racial bias when they saw a face that they perceived as threatening. But immediately after, a brainwave from the rational part of the brain, the prefrontal cortex, came in and challenged that initial brainwave. Our brains and the neurons inside them are constantly rewiring. This means that you can literally retrain your brain 
and combat racist thoughts. And here's an example of how. A study found racial bias lessened after subliminal exposure to counter stereotypes. Participants were shown faces of popular celebrities of diverse races, including Beyonce, and this kind of priming led to decreased bias within seconds to minutes. This emphasizes the scientific importance of representation in media. This might seem a little obvious, but people who spend more time with different races and different backgrounds show less bias. This is called contact theory, where intergroup contact reduces intergroup prejudice. It's why something like segregation increases racist behaviors and ideas. And finally, ideas and even science flourishes when diverse people work together. A study that analyzed the last names of 2.5 million research papers as a proxy for ethnicity found that when authors work with people of different races and backgrounds, their work received 10% more citations and prestige. These are scientifically based studies that we used as examples of how to combat racism. The most important thing is to be aware. Aware that racism exists aware that it is damaging. And aware that it is up to you to combat it altogether.